that there's a movement, something happens. And one question I have is that I remember a few months ago asking you when you first, when you first realized that you were self-realized and you told me a story of something that happened in Bombay about 10, 12 years ago when you were sick for seven days and after that you realized that something had happened. And recently when I've heard you talk, you've um, said that something happened comparatively recently, like the last few months. Mm. And I know there's different stages in realization. I'm just interested to know, if you like, where you are now and how you mm. see the different stages that have happened to you. come to the reply <clears throat> what um, I'm <laughs> feeling now is another sense of vibration in my body and this is the first day for a long time where I didn't do anything I just woke up naturally and mm -hmm. Kiala was gone so I had the whole day to myself and uh, I'm not very here. So, what usually happens when somebody asks, the other thing is, as I'm talking, I've got an echo of my own voice. That three echoes. Um, when somebody asks a question, um, a reply is presented as you were talking several you talked about the seven days in Bombay and then a series of replies came to that and then you talked about something else and a series of replies they've all gone so they came and they went <coughs> What happened um, in India was I, I almost died. I had a very high temperature. I didn't have any money, so I couldn't really go to a doctor. And I didn't know anybody at that time around who had money. And I never go to a doctor unless I really have to anyway. And I was quite enjoying what was happening what was happening was I had a very high fever uh, and I was hallucinating or what could be called hallucinating and I was going in and out of dimensions but I just thought I'd got a fever and I was hallucinating and then when that had gone after seven days oh, I'm just seeing things about it now um, Somebody told me that Ishtar was going to Thailand. And when I heard that, there was a discord in me, which meant to me, there's something not harmonious about it. So I looked at that to see what that was. And then a whole story unfolded about that. The story goes like this. Um, at present, you are locked in an illusion you you think you're this body and this mind and these emotions you you think that this is you that this is you and you think that this is what you think it is and it isn't and you're locked into it and you're locked into it because you came here to experiment with this dimension but you got caught in it and you're going round and round on the wheel 
dying, coming back, creating karma, dying, coming back to fix it. You're going round and round. Now, you're, you're not who you think you are, but you're locked into thinking who you think you are. Now, to get out of that, some pop is needed something needs to happen you can't just gently think your way out you can't think that you know what I'm saying and then think your realization and then be out it doesn't work like that you have to pop through pop out of the dimension you're in so so this all came back to Ishtar. Ishtar going to Thailand with her boyfriend, discord, and I said she's escaping. Now, what's needed to get you to pop out of your illusion is tremendous pressure. Tremendous pressure. And the system you're in, the body you're in, doesn't want that. This system wants to survive. It, it has a built-in program to survive. And every time it gets uncomfortable, it says, put me right. That's why when you bang your shin, you get a lot of pain. Your system is saying, take care of that, it might be broken. When you get too cold or too hot, too damp or too dry, your system says, this is too much you need to put it right. So when you get a lot of pressure, you say, I must undo this pressure. Now there are certain pains and there are certain pressures that you do need to put right because that's to do with the system. But there's another level of energy in you that has to build and build and build. And it'll take you to a most uncomfortable place. And you have to stay there and stay there. And then as I was talking about this, I saw something about this energy, and again it's to do with Ishtar, is this energy has to be built to a tremendous pressure, but it has to be streamed, it has to be in line, it has to be smooth. If it starts to think too much, or think this is right or this is wrong, it starts to disturb the energy, it comes back on itself and it becomes a chaos and that won't do it. You won't pop through through that sort of chaos. You have to have a tremendous pressure inside. If you uh, if you lose your bag with all your belongings in that's an opportunity. <laughs> that's pressure. If you lose your wallet, if the market crashes and you lose your money if your partner dies, if you have a car crash, if something tragic happens to you, there's an opportunity, providing you're conscious and with it and stream it. If you go into a sort of chaos, then the energy does this and it won't move. If you're there and say, what is it? If you're present, it starts to stream. And the more pressure that is in there, the more you're likely to pop through to another level of consciousness. So those seven days were a pressure and something in me knew not to do anything about it. So I stayed with it and stayed with it till I was on the edge of dying. I, I saw the door. And I didn't know that then, I know that now, looking back in retrospect, I know I could have gone through the door and it, I'd have been out of this dimension. But I know I didn't come to go away, I came to be here. So there was, there was a change. That's when I popped through. But I didn't realize I'd popped through. That's when I'd broken the, the film, but I didn't know I'd... And then it took time to realize that um, just to allow that in. And it's still happening. It's happening day by day. Different levels of that realization is happening. 
So is there is there basically one pop that is significant and is everything else then levels on top of that pop? Well, that pop is a place where you can't go back. You, I realized that, and again, all this is in re retrospect, and that's why <coughs> it's important that there are people like me that will talk, and people like the team who will share their experiences, is just to encourage you. Because when they, when it's happened, um, there's no motivation for anything. If the body gets hungry, then you respond to it. If you get cold, you respond to it. But there's nothing in there that wants to do anything anymore. And so most people who get realized, they just fade away. And then a few people, just a few, decide to share that. And the sharing won't help you realize that place yourself, but it'll encourage you to go on looking. What was your question again? But in a way you have answered it was because uh, the question was originally you talked about the seven days in Bombay as a time you popped through and then when you've been talking more recently you oh, said right. a realization happened okay. completely recently All right. so in a way you, you have answered it right but there's another level to that there, there is a point where you cannot be unaware again whatever you do you will be aware you can't move a finger and not know about it you you hear every every leaf you hear the sound inside the mouth the sound inside the head the heartbeat the digestion and I, I, I'm not talking about anything esoteric I'm not talking about anything magic it's just that you can all hear these things too you can hear the leaves out there but you might be concentrating too much on what I'm saying and you don't include those leaves. There's a hum from a machine over here somewhere and you may not hear that. When you've gone past that place, you hear, all, you, hear you smell, you taste, you include all these things and you cannot not do that. There is a place when you cannot be unaware again. I'm, I'm really interested in this thing about the pressure because I know for me there's no going back. It's, I know there's no going back, and yet I don't feel under, I, I don't feel under pressure. Yet I don't feel I'm escaping. It's like I guess I'm somewhere in between the two. And I know you, again you've talked before about often there's such tremendous pressure when someone pops through it's too much for the body, and you've explained mm. that's because the body wasn't prepared. Mm. So I, I guess there's <coughs> deg degrees of drama popping, if you like, to mm. simplify it. Well, that, although I'm not doing this anymore, what's happened while you've been around me is I've been pre pre preparing you all for that. And with my energy, I've been supporting you through different levels. And so with most of you that have listened and tuned in, you'll slide in and you won't even know you're there. And that's because you've been around this energy that's vibrating at that level and it's affecting you the whole time. So many of the difficult levels you're already through. And then what's taking you through comparatively easy is your intent, is your focus. Your intent is on the highest. And so you're going there. The only thing you could look at now is when you come to these places in yourself when you get angry and then you judge yourself for being angry you're missing a pressure point. At the moment you're angry you're giving yourself a gift. You're feeding some pressure there and then you judge your anger or you say I shouldn't be like that or I don't want to be like this and then you're trying to escape something that's there and you need to be with it because nothing is incidental, nothing is wrong. Everything is happening because it needs to happen. And so when you go into these places, instead of thinking I'm wrong or I've missed or I'm not there yet, say I'm here now and this is my reality. And by including that, it'll help your alchemy. 
and um, uh, the word that comes the sting has been taken out of your tail which means when you are angry you are so aware of it and so sincere about it you're not destructive anymore to yourself or to anybody if you just accept it it'll just be one of your stepping stones Another question I want to ask, which is a little esoteric, but I still want to, to ask it. You talk a lot about, not a lot, but sometimes you talk about people becoming invisible and walking through walls and how this in a way is a, a normal state of being and how what we, in what we call the future, this kind of thing is going to happen more and more. And I'm just wondering for you whether there's an attraction to do that kind of thing whether it ever comes up you'd like to experiment with doing these kind of things mm. it's just the opposite um, first of all it's not esoteric esoteric means something magical and something produced unnaturally and what we call magic is just s somebody who knows the rules who knows the laws and just uses them and there are people with ill intent that do that and then it becomes dark and there are people on the edge of uh, the light that do that and then it becomes lighter but usually by somebody who is realized they don't do that they don't interfere with things not that that doesn't happen around them but they don't do that so when you say uh, whether I feel like doing that um, ever since I can remember whenever I've heard anybody can do something I wanted to know whether this can do it so just watching people in sports and doing various things looking at it and then I looked and say do I want to do that so I've done many many things to find out whether I can do that and then came a certain point where I knew whether this system was fine enough or trained enough to do that Phys physical things so then I either did them or I didn't do them according to that and then came a point where I started to do the same thing on the inside what can be done and what can't be done can minds be read? Can you see into the future or into another part and all these things? And then my alignment has always been to do with helping people. So the, the games of that dropped away. And then what it became was when somebody was sitting in front of me, what is the maximum that this system can do for this being? And so I got to the place where I could see past lives and I could see what their childhood was like and know what they were feeling physically, emotionally, mentally where I could become inside the person and again, you see, this isn't esoteric, it isn't special all of you can do that um, It would be like if somebody sat here and played classical guitar very beautifully and you'd say, I want to do that. Let's say they're a concert guitarist. You could do that. But you'd have to do a lot of practice. And if you hadn't got an aptitude towards it, if you weren't born with a, uh, a natural talent, you'd have to work very, very hard. If you were born with a natural talent, you'd still have to practice eight hours a day but you could do it so what I'm talking about isn't out of any of your scope if you want to know what people are reading uh, thinking read their minds you can do that it just you have to devote yourself to it now I didn't decide I wanted to know what people were thinking I decided I wanted to be as efficient as possible helping the person I was working with so all these things developed 
And so if I heard that uh, somebody like John Paracas, for instance, could look at a naked body and decide their traumas by looking at them, I wanted to do that. If Ida Rolf could put the hand in to the body and release tensions, I wanted to do that. So I did all these things. And then came a certain point where Well, where this awakening happened, but I can't remember exactly when. This awakening happened, and then I'm completely blank about it. I don't see anything about it. I stopped using these facilities. In some way it was an imposition, but I wasn't very worried about that, because we're all responsible for ourselves. But somewhere I saw that Helping people doesn't help people. It, it helps to make you lazy. Um, all problems are bullshit. A problem is a problem because you have taken a fact and you want it to be a problem. You, your life right now is exactly the way you want it to be, right now. If you have money, that's what you want. If you don't have money, that's what you want. If you're hassled in a relationship, that's what you want. If you don't have a relationship, that's what you want. On on levels and levels and levels I'm talking about, you are right now exactly the way you want to be. And if you want to be any different, you can be different. Now, if you want to be able to walk through this wall, you can do it. You've got to work at it, you've got to practice at it. And this is what happens, is the moment you, you reach of that very fine vibration that allows you to release the holding of your molecules so that you can pass through something else that's said to be solid. The moment you've attained such a level, that's a very high level of purity. And at the moment you do that, then it's ridiculous to walk through walls when there are doorways. What happens is when you take your vibration to that level, you wake up, and then when you wake up, you don't bother with those things. The only reason you'd possibly bother with those things is if it would help other people to wake up. Because at the moment of awakening, there's great joy and there's great sadness. The great joy is you're free. And this is how I view this is it's freedom you are now free you know you are not born and you know you will never die you are you always have been and you always will be so you're free nothing can go wrong and nothing can go right everything is exactly the way it is you know that but at the same time the sadness comes is you look around and you see all these people They are also in that state, but they don't know it. And then, the sadness comes is, again, it's very, I mean, saying it isn't saying it. This is the closest I can get to. You are not other people to me. You are me. You are me, and I am you. And all separation is illusion. All separation is an attitude. We're all one. So I'm free. But this part of me isn't free. I'm totally free, and at the same time, this part of me isn't free. And so, what many people do, what most people do, when they're realized, they just decide to wait, because everybody's going to be free. And once you reach this place, there's no time, so you're not waiting. No, I know none of this makes sense. (laughs) And then certain people like me and many of the team and many of you, in your development over lives, in your path, 
when you reached a certain stage which is this magical fifth again which again I don't really know what it means but we call it the fifth you planted a um, a grain of sand you you create you planted a discord on that level you cr you created something that wasn't harmonious on the fifth level and then you continue to your realization now if you continue to your realization in absolute purity then you disappear from this dimension and then you can wander around here like there are billions of entities wandering around here saying wake up just wake up it's easy all you've got to do is let go they're all moving around trying to say this but you can't hear them because you're in this dimension so they pick on some poor channel and so a perfectly beautiful person is sitting there and suddenly they go <laughs> And this entity that was floating around is trying to manipulate this body through another dimension and it all looks very ugly and it's not very effective <laughs> so what many people have done and especially at this time that's where they've come back they planted this disharmony at a certain level so that when they reached this absolute purity they still had a place to come back to they could come they could anchor themselves back into this place and so I think in in the East traditionally it's called anchoring the fifth or something like that so they can get back and still function on this level um, what we're going to do this time many of us many of you if you want it is we're going to take this a stage further than it's ever been before where you will be able to disappear and produce things and some people might do that some people might not but you're going to be able to bring through all the levels of consciousness into this level um, many people have become realized don't really realize they realize they know something's happened they know something's free but they don't really know what it is um, becoming realized doesn't give you all these uh, cities these powers these uh, these ways of disappearing or walking through walls or manifesting things those are things that Uh, Tantra especially worked on those things it was more important than their realization was the powers the cities so many of them produced these things and that's when they get used darkly I'll explain that because I've been reading some books lately about people that got lost um, reaching the space of absolute purity is quite dangerous because you can disappear from this dimension which is not dangerous by higher dimensions but it's dangerous by this dimension because you can die most people don't do that they go to a certain level and pull back I heard that some people left this group uh, they might think they left for this reason and that reason what they probably left for was their system sensed the possibility of what can happen here things beyond the mind so they ran away with their fear many people reach the threshold and pull back some people develop these powers before their freedom some people have their freedom and then start to develop these powers if you develop the powers after freedom you only use them for the light 
if you develop them before the temptation is to use them for self gain which brings a lot of karma but also sometimes to help people so a person can become in a very high state of vibration but they're not in their freedom and of course you can't tell that because they look as though they're free and they have powers and then what happens is somebody comes in front of them and says I'm stuck in this, I'm stuck in and there's a great temptation to say I'll just help this person so what they do is they do something they it, nobody sees what happens but they do something with their energy which can help this person now as soon as they've done that they've created an imbalance and when you've done it once and of course it works when you've developed these powers especially when you're very close to the crystallization then you get a temptation to go on doing it and as you do it you make an imbalance and then that imbalance has to be paid for not only by the person who creates it but by the person that was helped they have to pay too there's an imbalance and then these little insidious uses of energy start to build up and before long the person's in the dark they th they look as though they're working for the light but they're not any anymore so what usually happens is when a person reaches a place of absolute freedom they don't use their powers not everybody ha not everybody who reaches their freedom is aware of their access to these powers but when they do they don't use them now this isn't to say that uh, amazing things don't happen around them so they might be talking or sharing and you feel the air different or you feel you different or you feel an ecstasy that you don't normally have on your own you might see colors or see things differently many things happen around these people but if they're in their freedom they are not doing it they are being but not doing if it's done it doesn't matter whether it's done for the light it's dark and it causes a repercussion what was the question? well you, you basically answered it, it was about uh, it was focused more on you and about whether you are interested oh, in right okay now what what's happened to me is just the opposite the, um, is as I realize these things are possible I keep away from them as I realize that um, that I can know all things that's what comes and I was blocking saying it I can know all things I can know the future I can know everything I block that and my theory about that is if I was to allow that then I wouldn't stay here and as I keep reminding myself and many psychics and channelers keep reminding me I have a major role to play on the planet and then we'll divert again because this is what I've been playing with recently and I don't have an answer yet as I've reached this place of purity on these certain levels my motivation is gone and then I, I know, and I know through my meditation and the messages I get, that I'm to be one of the, the pivots for the change of consciousness. But there's no motivation in me to do anything. And if I were to do anything, then I would lose my purity. And so what I were doing might be very helpful, but it wouldn't be clear and so what I'm playing with is uh, just staying here doing nothing 
and only responding to situations. So at the moment, rocks is a, a key in that because. <laughs> so I, I just got some stuff. So that's the agreement that he and I made in another level. That he was not going there yet. Because if he goes there, he'll become as mot motivationless as I am. And then... <laughs> <laughs> so somewhere he's made it, we made this agreement that he was going to stay back. And stay in the light, stay blessed. He's blessed. Uh, I'll see if I can come back to that later on about being blessed. So, and he has to stay that side of it because you'll lose your motivation. And you're the drive at the moment. You're what's moving it. You're what's moving the energy. And this will respond to that. The thing about blessed, what I got with you, and I, I can think of many people I know, who haven't realized this is many people are born on this planet um, blessed with a certain energy that they're blessed with a very high rate of energy and then they use this in their business in their relationships in power in different ways and things go very well for them to a certain point and then they get ill and this is happening with a lot of people in America this strange illness that's coming along where people just collapse and um, what this is probably about is that the energy that these blessed people were given by themselves in another dimension was not to be used solely for their own welfare. It was given to help the planet at this time. But they forgot that, they didn't wake up to that, so they have been misusing it. Even although they may not be doing anything unpleasant with the energy, they're misusing it for themselves. And it wasn't given for them. It was given to share. And so, in a way, the success of your business was a little bit like magic. It just you worked hard, but it just came. It just mm -hmm. came. And that was because you're blessed with this energy, and anything you do will work. And, um, but then you, you knew that it was for something else. That's why you wanted to start a commune way, way back. You knew somewhere it was for something else. And then, as you told me, since you've been doing this work, you've hardly spent any time in your business and it's doubled its value. And it's because you've now got your energy online and where it belongs now, what it's supposed to be doing. When I spend this time with you, I start to <laughs> go spaced out. <laughs> Which I, actually, that's a question that is an interesting <coughs> question for me. <coughs> it seems to me there's two very different categories of being spaced out. There's like, I know sometimes when I'm spaced out, I'm basically in my thoughts and I'm not here. Mm. Now you, when you get spaced out, it seems to me something, t obviously something totally different is happening. Mm. And I'm wondering if you can maybe talk a little bit about what happens when you get spaced out. <laughs> it's a spa <laughs> it's a spa you couldn't say you got nowhere. <laughs> Well, there are different levels. As you say, you often get spaced out. You were spaced out the other day when you were driving. I forget where we were driving from, to. Bristol, Bristol to London. Yes. You, you went out many times. Were you aware of that? You went into the same car. I know. <laughs> um, yes, there's a few times because there was a few times where I didn't check in the mirror to see if you were still in the car behind. Yeah, but there was more than that. I you you were that. thinking quite hard about something a lot of the time. I got really shot by that accident. Oh. When you saw the really bad accident with the car overturned. Yeah. And I, I, I was talking to Linda, that really shocked me that. Um, 
Okay. It's Let me true, I wasn't that aware of being spaced out, that's true. Right. You were, you were thinking quite hard. You see, when you drove behind us from... <laughs> from somewhere to somewhere else, where was that? Munich to France. You were not spaced out, you were there. And you were there, that last stage you were there the whole time. You didn't go. I don't think you went once. This time, on this last journey, you kept going in and out. And it was spaced out. Now, this was functioning. If there had been an accident in front, you'd have seen it, but it would have taken you a few milliseconds to get it. You'd have to get back in. Right. So that was because you were preoccupied. Now there's another level of spacing out where you're not focused on anything. Mm. And yet, if somebody walks into the room, you know they walked in. You'll probably know who it is too, but you're not focused on them. They are no more than the sound of the machine or the singing of the bird or the wind in the trees. Uh, but you're fully there. Not focused on anything, not thinking. Although thoughts may go by, you're not thinking them. And then there is another level, which is really uh, when you are t living so totally in another dimension that you've withdrawn all your presence from this one. You see, at the moment, you are all living in many dimensions now. There's, there's one of you in another dimension, another dimension, another and you're all fully conscious of where you are as well as being here but this at the moment is your main anchor this is, it's the lowest vibration, it's the main anchor it's where you need most of your energy because you've come here to do something and so most of you is here but you're in these other dimensions as well. And if you sit and uh, you allow, you'll start to become aware of these. You're aware of them in your dreams. else to say but I know Linda wants to ask something. Would you like to come and sit here and ask something? No, I think you've covered it. Uh -huh. okay. <clears throat> Let's hear what's going on with you if you've got any questions or any comments. See what I realize I'm doing is I'm tuning into the speaker and uh, then you have to get it or not get it. I'm not tuning into you. Mm. And so uh, you can't understand what I'm saying because what I'm saying doesn't belong to the mind. It belongs to somewhere else. So see if you've got anything to ask or to share. In my own work, I'm aware of going someplace and being with an energy. And when I activate it on this level, some of it trickles through and some of it remains. Mm. What is your experience of that? Well, the game is that we're playing on this dimension at the moment. The game is how much can we bring through? Because previously it's all been locked up there. Or very, very little's come through into very few people. And now the game is like it comes through in a Van Gogh and it comes through in, in a Beethoven and a Handel and a Mozart, it comes through. And uh, most of them were probably in semi-trance when they were doing that. Now, the game this time is, let's be fully conscious here and in touch with that. That's the game. And it's very stressful for the system. That's why you're so delicate and why you're so sensitive. And that you can go on overload so easily. But that's the game we're going to play. It's 
how much of that voltage can we bring down this this little wire and it's possible to bring a lot through when you are in meditation or trance or out you can bring a lot through but then you're not aware of bringing it through and it, it affects it affects this dimension that's why these people who are in very high levels of vibration they don't have to talk they don't have to do anything they they are like a a tube that brings that nourishment into this plane but the game is to to be in touch with that and have that system translated into a more digestible form for this dimension and you're doing it through music so that's that's going to be your way and it doesn't matter about the music it matters about these vibrations and your way is turning the vibrations into music other people's may be into cleaning houses <laughs> <laughs> And that's what I've been talking to you about over this time is you need to ground yourself here so that you see many things. You're in touch with many planes, but you don't bring them here, so it leaves you quite a space case floating around on planet Earth. <laughs> <laughs> and you need to find ways to ground yourself. That's why you used to work in the garden and do things where you used your hands and so that you could pull that in. Paul, I have a question that's been coming to me a lot of the time. I know it sounds silly, this, because good and evil, there's no good and evil. But I can remember past lives when I did, quote, evil things, unquote, and when I did, quote, good things, unquote. And what comes up for me is that, in some way, I'd, I'd like you to comment on, um, the world beyond good and evil in the way that it used to be. Like, you can imagine priests of great magic one way or another, fighting things out. And I've read books which I can recognize because someone says, this is my past life, and something says, yes, it is. Mm. So it happened. Mm. And, yet, and yet I can't understand quite what happened. Is there anything you could comment on that? <coughs> there is no such thing as good and evil, and yet it exists. Um, we developed this game we develop this planet by having an idea we wanted to experiment with something we wanted to take something to its limits so we had an idea and we stabilized the idea we stabilized the thought the vibration until it lowered its vibration and became manifest so we created this planet and you've created that when we created it we created duality we had to be dual otherwise you don't know you're here in order to be here there has to be a watcher and a watched when they become one then there's no duality and there's no here here may be here but you're not here so you don't know about it so we've created the duality and in that duality we created what is called good and what is called evil. They don't exist outside of ourselves. Now I'll talk about that a bit more because I've had calls from all over the world, from different psychics that tell me I'm under psychic attack. And it's true, I am. There's somebody who is trying to harm me psychically. Um, and so all these people have called up quite worried about it and say I should do this invocation and I should do this guided thing and cover this up with all sorts of things and on the level they're talking about it's perfectly true that there is somebody who through their mind and their powers and their energy is trying to hurt this but this can't be hurt 
and he can't be hurt because he's not in duality anymore if I was to defend I would be in duality because I would be acknowledging an attack and therefore a defense is creating duality the only place that evil exists is in the mind of humans that's all is that's the only place it exists now I'm not saying that you may not wake up one night and find a demon at the end of your bed I'm not saying that isn't possible that's perfectly possible but that demon doesn't exist outside of you it exists in you now it is outside of you as well and it can har harm you but it can only harm you because you have that impurity on the inside when the impurity is gone from the inside it disappears from the outside so evil exists in the minds of humans it's part of duality and when you've disconnected from it then it can't touch you it may touch the body it may touch the mind it may touch the emotions it may do depending on the level of purity but it can't touch you nothing can touch you and then the more pure the system comes the less it can be affected so and then we'll divert some more when you say in a past life you created some evil let's say you have the seed of that evil inside you now evil is nothing more than imbalance that's all it is an imbalance can only be created unconsciously if you're fully conscious you can't do anything that can be called evil it's impossible because I was thinking of an illustration but people do these things it's, it's a little bit like shooting a hole through your own, own <coughs> hand I mean people do that I know they do but it's like if I was to hurt you I'm actually hurting myself and it's actually be, it's beyond that too it's just impossible with awareness so at some time you were unaware now you were supposed to be unaware you were supposed to do that that was part of the experiment otherwise if none of us did anything unaware we couldn't have had this whole thing at all so we all did that now here's something again don't attempt to understand it just listen like wind in the trees when you have done something about which you are uncomfortable the ego goes in reverse the ego says the I the pride the arrogance says I did something wrong I don't want to admit I did something wrong so in order not to have it wrong I want to put it right so I did this in this imbalance I want to balance it so that it never happened you get that right so you don't have to accept that you did something stupid you got that right so you hold the imbalance now in this particular life you may have chopped off heads this particular life you may do nothing more than a little sharp remark or hold somebody's uh, progress up who's under you in a company but it's the same thing, the seed is there. If you 